So you've probably been looking at used vehicles and you've noticed used Range Rovers are just so cheap. Why in fact is that? They're good enough for the King and Queen of England, they should be good enough for us. They clearly have some of the latest technology, the most voluptuous shapes, highest quality paint technology that is second to none, and as well an off-roading prowess that can outhandle anything from this side of a Land Cruiser or a Jeep Wrangler. Why in fact will you find a used Range Rover so cheap? Let's get into it now. That's right, I'm always looking for something a little more unique. I'm kind of bored with vehicles like the Dodge Durango or the Jeep Grand Cherokees or vehicles like these Lincolns, or even trying to avoid vehicles like this Volkswagen Atlas that are just plagued with problems. So it always keeps me searching for the next greatest thing, and that brings me to Range Rovers. Is it a vehicle, in fact, I wanna own, or should you own, and why are they so cheap on the used car market? Could it be too good to be true? So here we have a couple of gorgeous Range Rovers. Here we have a beautiful HSE. What we're looking at here is an SVR. It's absolutely beautiful. Over here we have another amazing Range Rover. Full scale, full large and in charge. So clearly these two gorgeous vehicles come at a significant cost. We're talking well into the six figures. So if you want to get into a brand new Range Rover like one of these, you're going to have to pay the piper. So how can we tell actually these used Range Rovers are so cheap? Well. It doesn't take very long to start scouring the traders. I look on autotrader.com, I look at autotrader.ca, of course, Canadian US sites, and I scour all the classifieds and I come up with the same theory, and that really is, is yes, they depreciate very, very hard. With a modern day Range Rover, I look back at a 2013 and now I extrapolate, here's 2023, and we're looking at vehicles that lost about 85% of their original value. Vehicles that started at 60, $70,000 and now you can find them for 10 or 15 grand. I even found a few vehicles on the traders that were down around seven or $8,000 if you go a couple years more because they become to the point where they're just way too expensive. You're literally losing about 80, 85% of their original value in the first 10 years. And how does that shake out with some of its competitors? Well, for example, vehicles like a modern day four Runner like this will only lose about half of their value in that first 10 years and even an old school Audi Q5 like we're looking at right in front of us these clearly are going to lose the majority of their value in the first 10 years as well because Audi the VAG group was known for all kinds of problems coolant leaks oil burning problems timing chain issues with certain engines of course rust was a bit of a problem so a lot of these vehicles are going to lose about 70 to 75 percent of their original value in that 10 year time frame clearly barely edging out the likes of BMW or Range Rover. BMW X5s like we have right here, you can see that's an X5 and the X5 is also going to lose about 75% of its original value in that first 10 years because of some of the high costs and maintenance and servicing and reliability concerns. Vehicle like this, the Lexus RX, if you go back in history, 10 year old Lexus RX vehicles are still worth about 50 to 45% of their original value. In other words, they only lose about half or just over half of their original value in that 10 year time frame. And that's clearly because of the reputation that Lexus has. People don't feel like they need to toss them to the curb after they're five years of age because they just keep running and running and running and running and running. Yes, they're ultra reliable. So clearly everything depreciates. In the 10 year time frame, most of the German import Euro luxury SUVs, you're typically gonna lose 70 to 90% of its value in that 10 years. Where a lot of the Japanese like the Lexus, Toyota products, and maybe even the Acuras, you're gonna be closer to that halfway point. Let's just get in right into the meat and potatoes. Why in fact, some of these used modern day Range Rovers are just so cheap. I mean, vehicles like this Range Rover, HSE like we see right here, all clapped out and sitting on its rump. That's one that's clearly only gonna be worth about 10 or $15,000 and has been sitting here in the back 40 with all this garbage and crates and dunnage just because it's not ready for the road. We have another Land Rover, Land Rover from the same family, similar state of affairs. And the reason a lot of them get to that decrepit state is because number one point, the cost of servicing and maintenance is just so astronomically high. I mean, look at these Range Rover parts. We have some door skins there. We have all kinds of body panels. Down here is a whole plethora of body panels and other components from a lot of those Range Rovers. I mean, let's face it. If you want to take your vehicle in because as a check engine light, it's going to cost you two, three, four hundred dollars for diagnostic fees. Also, we can't forget about the recently increased service shop rate of about two hundred 
$1,500 per hour just to get the vehicle in and have a look around. Then we can't talk about the average of about $1,300, $1,400 per year of servicing costs. That's if nothing breaks. That's just maintenance. That's just to get the vehicle into the shop. They do a basic oil service. They'll do a look around, put it on the hoist, pull the wheels off, scope the brakes and take a look around. Make sure everything's running fine and there's no serious anomalies. If there are, they write up a PO, send you a quote for a big repair and that's when things get really ugly. But the bottom line is you can anticipate $1,000 to $2,000 for annual servicing from any one of these modern day Range Rovers. We also can't forget the simple fact that a lot of these cars come from a place yeah, it may only be worth $10,000 today. But remember, once it was a $100,000 vehicle, so the parts that go into it are still based on that $100,000 vehicle price tag. That's why you're still gonna get snookered paying the big dollars for any part that goes into your modern day Range Rover. And so of course, when you're stuck paying those huge service bills, it starts to get tiresome. Remember, when you look at RepairPal, they estimate a Toyota RAV4 of similar years are gonna cost you about $429 per year for servicing. Imagine doing a set of brakes all the way around on a Toyota RAV4, that's gonna cost you about $700. Do a set of brakes all the way around on any one of these fine British luxury SUVs, you're probably going to expect three to $4,000. Huge difference, not just in annual maintenance, but also when the big hits come it's gonna get ugly so the second reason why a lot of these vehicles are so cheap on the used car market comes down to new vehicle price point and incentives and clearly when you're looking at a lot of these vehicles you're finding yeah some great deals on the used car market sure why is that because they were shuffled down in a hurry and it's a lot of late model vehicles like that as a matter of fact I have a Jaguar F-Type and I can be totally honest when I tell you that I get monthly almost weekly emails from the vendor saying hey $2,000 off, $3,000 off, $10,000 off. We give you all these trade-in values and incentives with even finance and interest and lease rates that are better than most banks are gonna give you. Of course, people wanna get into the latest and greatest. They look at their vehicle, they're two or three years old. They're like, okay, warranty's coming to a close. Do I buy a CPO or do I just move on and get one of these new vehicles? Well, in fact, it's those high levels of incentivization, the push that's coming from the manufacturer, from your local dealer that are actually creating that sort of false sense of urgency that you feel like you need to actually buy the next and latest and greatest. As soon as you wanna jump into that next one, the old one is old news. And then they flood the market and because they're not a popular vehicle on the used car market, they sit and they sit for 100 days, 200 days, 300 days. Sometimes these vehicles can sit on a lot for two or three years. You can get vehicles, beautiful vehicles like this Range Rover HSE Sport. You can get this little guy, another Sport, of course, you have all kinds of different jobs here. You have older Range Rovers here. You have all kinds of different options and they sit on the lot for a long period of time and that drives the prices down. The next point has to do with the fact that in this ever-changing global cost of energy. Of course, everybody now is going electrification. There's talk about hydrogen. And of course, the use of a standard internal combustion engine right now is actually penalized. Yes, if you drive a big V8 engine and it sucks a lot of fuel, you're gonna pay at the pump dearly because if you're in countries like Canada where they start slapping you with excise tax called carbon tax, which by the way, that's just an excuse for more revenue by the government and because of their mismanagement and misfunctioning and operating of the public coffers, the bottom line is it's still there. You're getting penalized for higher fuel consumption, higher escalated fuel prices, and a lot of these vehicles now you could pay two bucks or more a liter just because a lot of them take the premium fuel. Premium fuel is pricey. There's cities in Canada right now that are paying well over two bucks. They're up to 230 a liter. That's outrageous. And vehicles like this brand new Discovery like we're looking at here, you can expect about 19 miles per gallon and about 23 miles per gallon on the highway. Very poor when you consider a lot of modern day hybrids or luxury hybrids are getting a much, much better fuel economy than that. So it doesn't take very long to calculate the simplicity of the matter. So you drive these vehicles, for 52 weeks of the year, you put a tank full in every week because most people for commuters are putting about a tank a week. And at two bucks a liter, you're gonna to expect to pay almost $10,000 a year just for fuel cost to keep this thing on the road. And we're worried about depreciation. What about the cost of fuel consumption? So that's a real factor. With the use of all these electrified vehicles from Tesla and all the other brands out there, and even Toyota brands like the Highlander, Hybrid actually creates vehicles that are easy to use, cheap to run daily, and are still reliable. So it saves you a huge amount of money. So getting yourselves one of these for the long term is going to be almost cost prohibitive. For the long term, you start to see the light and you can't afford the fuel costs. 
So the fourth factor that you have to consider is the fact of reputation. Now, a lot of the reasons these vehicles drop in so much value on the used car market is just the reputation. A lot of people assume they're horrifyingly unreliable. And while there may be some truth to some of that on selective models or selective drivetrains, that's not entirely always the case. As a matter of fact, a lot of Range Rovers are actually reasonable. You can get in and out of one in five years if you get the right model and it's not gonna break the bank. You just have to get into the right vehicle and with a little bit of luck, of course, on your side, you might be able to get through relatively unscathed, but it's the reputation. People assume that everything's gonna break, blow up, melt down, seize. I mean, the reputation just doesn't begin and end with the fact that they're one of the best off-road vehicles on the market with the most complex 4x4 systems in the planet. But the flip side is, yes, reliability is something that has garnered a bad reputation in the Range Rover world. And so you have to draw the straw and decide, is that worth it? For me, I love these vehicles. I think they're spectacular. Number five is reliability, and that's the problems you will anticipate owning some of these vehicles by Range Rover. Here we have in front of us the Discovery, and there's a host of issues you would anticipate this with the Range Rover Discovery. A lot of people love them. They're great. They're very attractive. They have all of the amenities you would anticipate for a lot of British luxury SUVs. Of course, look at these great headlights, and they have that great grill on the front. Beautiful. Look at the grills there, as well as the front. Very attractive vehicle, lots of glass on the roof, beautiful wheels, gorgeous little detailing everywhere. Beautiful vehicle here all the way around. So I see why people in fact buy these. Sadly, there's been lots of people complain about crankshaft seizures. So in other words, your rod bearings, your bottom end of the engine, the reciprocating mass seizing up, burning out bearings and becoming just essentially a throwaway log. It basically writes off that engine. That's a sad state of affairs. Of course, air ride suspension, the self-leveling suspension system on virtually every Range Rover has been a known issue. And that's no different right here. That has problem areas. And of course, you talk about airbags, you talk about pumps and relays and all the electrics and associated relaying and controls to go with that means that you're probably going to have a problem along the way with some of the air ride suspension on some of these vehicles. Now unfortunately another part inside there's a little trigger for your electric brakes. So your park brakes back here are a known issue where they seize up or they grab and they won't let go. These brakes can be a serious problem. I know on my F-Type it, it was a problem as well and you can get the trigger, the lock, it won't unlock, it'll just squeal and howl, and that is a known issue. The infotainment system, another big problem. You have to get firmware updates, half the time it doesn't work. And I'll be honest, my F-Type, it never really worked all that well. It gave me an error, it said SIM card error, I took it into the dealer, it took a week and a half to get a new SIM card ordered because it wouldn't take the flash and the update. Then I put a new one in, I drove it for a week and it's a problem again, I almost just gave up. I currently don't have navigation in my F-Type Jag and they use a similar system in a lot of these modern day Range Rovers and unfortunately that is a known problem and unfortunately with some of these vehicles transmissions yes you have three major components within a vehicle that are big dollars to fix engine check you got problems there transmission check you got problems there and the electrics check got problems there and I'll show you a few other little problem areas this rear hatch area known to be a problem it won't open up or it locks up and the handle either just doesn't work anymore it becomes detached internally it just stops working that's an issue then of course up here we have more problems under the hood oil leaks that's a common problem you're going to start developing oil leaks coolant leaks and would you believe from where when have you ever heard of a throttle body part of the fuel system needing a coolant line going through it but yes in fact the throttle bodies leaking coolant are another problem area. And you know what that means? Ah, uh, yes. Big dollars out of your pocket. So it doesn't unfortunately begin and end with the Range Rover Discovery. Other problems exist in other models like in HSE Sport vehicles like this. You can also get issues with, because it's direct injected engines, you can get fouling, carbon fouling. You can get problems with the injectors. They are known and they're, they're very, very difficult to remove and they're very costly to replace. So that's one issue. Of course, transmissions have been an issue. Although the ZF 8 speed is generally pretty robust, there have been some issues in there. Of course, they also talk about water ingress, leaks into the cabin. Sadly, you can fill this thing up like a fishbowl. That's another area that you have to be concerned with. And then you have to deal with seals and leaks and all those kind of problems. We also talk about carbon fouling right there on the exhaust. Look how dirty it is down there. That's right, you can get carbon fouling 
because too much fueling and you can get as a result smoke coming out of the exhaust you see puffs of black smoke from time to time you also get rattly engines and of course with some of these models they have a supercharger and it's that snorkel on the front end of the supercharger that starts to rattle particularly at a low rpm on idle you'll hear it rattle. you'll hear this random clinking and banging noise especially when you turn the ignition off that can start to bang and pop and then that's just the beginning of the end for that supercharger then you have vehicles like the Range Rover Evoque. Don't even get me started. So reliability concerns are not unfounded. Clearly there are some problem areas. It's not as bad as a lot of people say, but you could be literally rolling the dice. And that's what a lot of people don't want to do. They don't want to get themselves in over hot water because then they're worried about having a used vehicle outside of warranty and that's going to cost them dearly. And that's why prices drop and actually nosedive. And that's in fact why you can get some great deals on some used Range Rovers. And with all of that said right there, check it out. Out. Also, if you've been looking on the used market, you probably wonder about BMWs and why, in fact, used BMWs are just so cheap. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye bye.